Yeah, my, my movement still was uh, getting or being involved in music. I, I love dancing. Okay. For whatever reason, I don't know how I got into this thing, but uh, dancing was my favorite mm -hmm. hobby. Mm -hmm. You know, I um, was a very good soccer player mm -hmm. and um, I got injured mm -hmm. seriously mm -hmm. on the right leg and um, they had to put a steel plate inside of there too. Mm -hmm. And it took about 18 months to get me in order again, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank God I could have walked. Mm -hmm. And um, a group of us, uh, we, we just got ourselves together. Young guys, we was about um, 15, 14, 15. Mm -hmm. And um, and any anywhere a horn blow, mm -hmm. we were right there. As a matter of fact, we were, we were in christenings and weddings. That we didn't even know who got married or who baby christened. We knew exactly even for the spin on a Sunday evening where to go uh, and find a party. Just to dance. Mm. I mean, we enjoy life in that way. So you were from Porter Spin or? Yeah, I'm from Porter Spin, I'm from Green Corner. Man. Okay, Green Corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things. Very serious part. <laughs> a well known part of Trinidad. Okay. Right there. Born right there and grew right out in that area. So okay. I went through everything in the area. <laughs> So, that good, bad, and indifferent. Okay, okay. And um, yeah, and eventually, as we started paying attention. I have to say, we to the different bands and know which band to go and party with, and what kind of music to expect, and mm -hmm. things like that. And um, that went on for some years. And I remember that um, one of the players of the Sonny Lewis Orchestra, which was Joey's bigger brother. Mm -hmm. he, his wife gave a dance in Manzanilla. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother and they were going to this dance. Mm -hmm. And um, they took me with them. And when we got there, everything was set up with the band. And for some reason, well, I knew all the musicians in the band, mm -hmm. in various bands as a matter of fact, because anytime they go to play, they see my face. Mm -hmm. And um, for some reason or the other, I went on the stage and I took up the cowbell and mm -hmm. started knocking with the man. Mm -hmm. And I never left the stage. When they stopped, I stopped. Mm -hmm. I guess I didn't have my friends and my regular youths to, uh, in the dance mm -hmm. to, to go to dance with them. And I didn't want to go to adults mm -hmm. and ask yeah, so to dance and things uh, like that. Uh, uh, uh. So I just stayed there. And when the dance was over, the band leader gave me a dollar. Mm. Well, you know, that dollar was a, a big thing to me. Mm. Gave me a dollar, and that was it. One dollar. And the next time that band played out, I was standing right on that stage knocking. Knocking cowbell. And I kept going on like that. Okay. Eventually, it was, that was a, a New Year's, a New Year's night. Mm. Mm. And, um, by Carnival, the other dance in Belmont, I went. Uh, when the dance was over, mm -hmm. when I was upgraded a little bit, because now we're talking about Carnival Sunday night, so it's put up, put up, put up. Mm -hmm. Whatever you get to make a rhythm song, mm -hmm. it's working. I held on to a tom tom that the drummer had there. And oh, we wailed away that night. Mm -hmm. I got $2.50. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Uh, what year so that was if you? Um, that that would be hanging around late fifty six, mm -hmm. fifty six, somewhere in somewhere inside it. Mm -hmm. um, then the Monday night, I remember that they played in St Crispin School, mm -hmm. and after midnight, the band came out going up the street mm -hmm. with the the dance, um, mm -hmm. you know, the, the crowd that came to the dance. Again, I was beating something. When we got into Port of Spain. About three dollars. Well, I'm a musician now, but I, there's no way of stopping it. <laughs> yeah. uh, my uncle, uh, he was married to Lucy Mapp. That's one of Trinidad's top singers. Lucy Mapp? Yeah, Lucy Mapp. Mm. She was one of Trinidad's on birds. And mm. uh, at that time, a lot of Trinidad vocalists mm. went abroad to Europe mm. to seek fame and fortune. Mm. You know, we have people like um, Lloyd Boucher, mm. Cicely Ford, mm. and, and quite a few other. Well, she went there also. Mm. And they were residing in England, and um, I started playing the bongo drums, I started playing the congas. Mm -hmm. This thing just 
got into so you, you as a youth before that you used to play drums or anything or you just no. flow from going on the stage with the yes, cover yes 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 okay but i beat pan before that of course oh you used to beat pan yeah i used to beat pan before that okay. only a carnival because that is the only carnival time the band will practice seriously mm. to go on the road after that mm. forget it until next Mm. Next carnival, you know. So the uh, the main color, cause some of the bands they played with um in Pana of a was in Panama. Steel bands. Steel bands. Yeah. One single band, St. Vincent Street band, Stalin. Stalin. Yeah. Was a Stalin on St. Vincent oh, Street. Um, that was a top one of the top. Which part of St. Vincent Street they were? Right, there was it Batu, just just between. Why the like, corner there? Let huh? me call it between Oxford Street and Park Street or Traffic Road, so okay. to speak. Okay. okay. I lived across the street from Empire. Okay. Those are the days uh -huh. when um. Bands like Stromboli, them boys, them Fortunate. Mm. Steel band was more on the social side at that time mm. because it was so-called decent young boys mm -hmm. from college and things like that that had formed these these bands, mm -hmm. and they all the youths, uh, you know, the, mm. the young girls from Holy Name and all the places started playing CBs, printed jersey with jeans, mm. you know, inexpensive mm. mass. And mm. Stalin was one of the leading bands of, in that era in that time. Okay. And um, I used to play with them. Well, I ended up being the last captain of the band. Okay, and, and, yeah, and brought it on the road. Uh, that was about 64 or something. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, that was my involvement in, in, mm -hmm. in the band, actually. And I sent him out when he sent me a pair, the money to purchase a pair of bongo drums. Mm -hmm. I saw yep. them. Uh, and I started working with them. And one day, uh, one of the leading bands at that time, the Phil Brito Orchestra, mm -hmm. wanted a bongo player. And uh, the bongo player from that band were going away. Mm -hmm. And how this guy got in touch with me, God alone knows. He just got in touch with me, came to me and asked me if I would sit in mm -hmm. with the man. And I said, sure. And I got in there and they kept me. Okay. That's why I was doing everything right. I feel brutal. Yeah. That's so why I was doing everything. I was doing everything right. Mm -hmm. And um, I stayed there. The band used to perform live on radio from the Tavern on the Green on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. On a restaurant, mm -hmm. night spot on St. Vincent Street. 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 Okay, I don't everything, know that. everything was done with me on that street. <laughs> <laughs> the the, the uh, revived Red Army. Uh -huh. It came out for one year. Uh -huh. uh, I beat a guitar part with Red Army, and Red Army was one of the most notorious steel bands uh, in Trinidad well. at that time. Mm -hmm. Yes, Red mm -hmm. Army mm -hmm. was one of the most notorious steel bands at that time in, mm -hmm. in, in Trinidad. For fighting, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. But I didn't love all of that. <laughs> Anything that had excitement, I don't know. I, I, uh -huh. I can run. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. it was very interesting. Anyway, um, I stayed with that band for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. That'll be two, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, be two, and that band was the resident band of Radio Trainer to plan Sunday Serenade and mm -hmm. different programs. Mm -hmm. And that was right, yeah. So I automatically became a paid a paid musician mm -hmm. for Radio Trainer because we used to get paid. Mm -hmm. The band used to get paid for performing mm -hmm. on, on sponsored shows, you know. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would go to Bob Gittins. He was one of the main announcers for. Yeah. Broadcasting radio yeah, from, yeah, and we play, when they play certain tunes that will feature the instrument, my little bongos, mm -hmm. I will tell him, listen, the band is going to play so and such a tune. You have to say featuring Clarence Kilvan. Uh, the bongos, uh, and he will do it. Uh, well, my, my name seems to start going out there now. Mm -hmm. Nearly every week I hear my name on the radio, mm -hmm. and um, eventually. One day, a youngster by the name of Patrick Diaz came up to me and said, listen, um, that's Cyril Diaz's son. Mm -hmm. He sent the son to me mm -hmm. and he told me that they want a bongo player for the recordings. Mm -hmm. And uh, they do all RC recordings and others with um, Sparrow Melody. But the world, that Cyril Diaz was the, the principal band mm -hmm. for recording Calypso. Calypso's. Mm -hmm. Boy, wow, that was a big honor for me. I mm. jumped from Brito straight into that. Are you in the 60s now? Or? No, that's the very late 50s, late 50s, coming on like 58. Mm -hmm. uh, late 57, going into 58. Uh, so, yeah, about mm -hmm. 58, early. And um, 
I understand that uh, Spiral had told them that um, they like my rhythm and whatnot, and mm -hmm. they should get me. And they did come and they got me. That was for like Gina and Dina and so on, then? Um, after Gina and Dina. After Gina and Dina. Right, like the, the pay as you own era. Okay, okay. The tax. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You remember some of those from Gunslingers and Ten to One. Mm -hmm. Ten to One is moved uh, around that, 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 that around mm -hmm. that area. Mm -hmm. It was a little before Ten to One. You know? mm -hmm. Anyway, um, we did this thing and uh, I joined the band. And um, the band traveled a lot. Mm -hmm. Traveled to the Caribbean islands regularly. Mm -hmm. And um, another event in that respect I would always remember. I was, uh, and those days people never carry bongo players away. I mean, that's that's that mm -hmm. was a waste of a ticket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was speaking with my mother on on Saint Vincent Street one mm -hmm. morning. Just happened to be there, and this little guy rolled up on his bicycle. Mm -hmm. Parents, dad, tell me to catch and get on to you, and tell you to get to the airport, airport right away. What? Yes, they're going away. The band is traveling and they need an instrument on the show. Mm. I did. Ma? Mm? Uh, Took on. off. Uh, go on, throw some clothes in the bag. That was about 11 o'clock in the day. Mm. By 4.30 in the afternoon, I was sitting on a stage in Martinique at one of Elysee theaters mm. doing a show. Mm. They had the band there for 19 days doing a show before the movie. Mm. The show, the name of the show was Lay Bongo Nights. Mm -hmm. That is where that little instrument came in. <laughs> the Bongo Nights, huh? Lay uh, Bongo Nights. Uh, they had um, dancers from, from uh, Colombia, mm -hmm. Sando P, the little midget man from Guyana, mm -hmm. uh, Lord Creator, mm -hmm. uh, King Fighter. Yeah, and um, we toured straight up the islands, up and down. Mm -hmm. And um, from then, I started traveling with, with that band. And I actually got a bit tired of traveling. I mean, I was very, very young, and I was mm -hmm. wild and crazy, uh, having a long good time over there. 